Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell and indeed a happy new year as we start off this year. Today on the program we'll be speaking to Trond Morton Lindeberg. He's the BDO CEO for the EMEA region. He'll be talking to us about at length issues touching on carbon trading as well as what their impact has been in the continent and an interesting perspective on just what he's up to here in Kenya. Thanks for joining us on the Trading Bell Show. First time in Kenya? Uh, not the first time in Kenya, actually, uh -huh. but it's wonderful to be, to be back. All right. Welcome to our program. And just uh, to kick start the session, of course, uh, your visit to Kenya comes at a very strategic moment, especially for your organization and what you're doing with the East Africa Wildlife Society. Just walk us through what is the visit all about? Well, I guess the visit first and foremost is all about catching up after a uh, well lengthy period of um, staying home for, for a lot of us, right? So, which, which certainly affected people on their, in their individual lives as well as in their professional lives, right? So mm -hmm. it's great to be back to, to, to kind of reconnect in person with uh, colleagues in this case in East Africa. Um, and as you touched on, we will also cover uh, our kind of partnership with the East African uh, Wildlife Society. Um, and I certainly look forward to go out to learn more about uh, deforestation and, uh, uh, and obviously also mm -hmm. the, the impact our actions will, uh, will have over time in the mm -hmm. region. All right. And of course, for, for our viewers uh, there, just walk us through what the organization is all about. And uh, of course, uh, what is the scope of uh, works that uh, you are looking to deliver here in the country? Well, I think, um, you know, the partnership with, with East African Wildlife Society is um, we were actually looking for something tangible to do. And uh, well, thus we're planting more than 5,000 trees uh, tomorrow or the next few days. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we are certainly aware that's not, uh, you know, everything we have to do, right? But we were kind of looking for a symbolic action to uh, make it tangible to our people, to our clients, uh, to, to kind of make them understand that we have an ambition to lead the way going forward. Uh, in terms of impacting uh, not only the East African society, but the global uh, society in terms of uh, the environment going forward. All right. I'm passionate about the environment as a person, and I've seen a number of companies are pushing the agenda of net zero. And perhaps give us uh, your perspectives on this and what does it mean, especially now that you're seeing uh, countries uh, setting up infrastructure to support issues touching on carbon, carbon trading and such like? Yeah, so, uh, well, the, the net zero campaigns has been uh, around for some time, right? And uh, um, several state uh, leaders has committed to, to a net zero strategy through the Paris Accord back in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, it was a huge discussion on the COP26, uh, the fall of 21. Um, and at the same time, the international business community also kind of partnered around uh, a uh, similar commitment. Uh, and equally so did BDO International on a global basis. Um, and uh, I think, well, similar to you, yeah. a lot of us were kind of very passionate about the environment, right? And we can well, we can recycle, we can um, change our car park, we can cycle and not take the car and so on and so forth, right? Uh, but the results will be seen only when the global business community is changing their behaviors. So, and that's where we kind of see us as an international network uh, with a footprint in more than 160 countries around the world. Uh, have a tr tremendous opportunity to not only impact ourselves, but also impact our people and our clients going forward. And what's your take on this issue around the net zero? Is it achievable? Are we making the right steps and strides in making sure that it is implemented in a sustainable fashion? It, it's, a, it's a very good question, right? And I think my experience and 
several others experience would have been that well it's it seems easy to commit to a net zero strategy it's the right thing to do um, and uh, then again very few people understand the complexity of doing it and depth of, of doing it uh, committing to net zero is uh, yeah as I said it's the right thing to do but it also we also need to be aware that it's a complete transformation of how we operate, how we run, uh, and how we strategize around our businesses today. In an ideal setting, uh, what would this entail? Just walk us through this, because it's perceived to be a very complex matter, but you've been there, you've seen uh, tales of organizations that have been able to champion this, and it's come to life. Yeah, and well, every journey has a start, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where it's kind of great to have you know, high ambitions, it's great to have a dream uh, and, uh, well, rest assured we will achieve it. But then again, you need to start at some point. Uh, and uh, that's kind of, well, the important thing is really to understand where we are at right now. Uh, so really starting to understand what do we need to measure uh, to understand what you can improve. Uh, and I think well, you know, that starting point is challenging enough to, to quite a few businesses out there, right? So, um, but then again, I'd kind of encourage um, everyone out there to, to start the journey, not to be frustrated when you understand the complexity of it, because it's, it's possible to break down in pockets and, and actually make improvements uh, on the way. Transparency and openness kind of comes out as uh, well, cornerstone to, to achieving this at the end, right? So um, if it's kind of a secret agenda within uh, any corporation out there, uh, it's easy to kind of fail, to be honest. And uh, then again, if you dare to kind of set up quite ambitious uh, targets, if you dare to, to kind of dig into and, and try to understand the agenda, and if you dare to be open about your current state and future ambitions, um, then, uh, well, the international society will start measuring you not only on your, uh, well, p and in, in, uh, in its traditional way, but also how you're actually improving uh, on, on the carbon agenda, uh, mm -hmm. especially. All right, interesting. And I'm keen to hear from you. What has been the impact of BDO in your agenda touching on, uh, of course, this very vital subject? Yeah, no, so, so as I said, well, we're kind of represented in more than 160 countries around the world. Um, somewhere between 900,000 and a million clients out there, close to 100,000 people. Um, and I think this is where, back to your passion, right, which is great, mm -hmm. and back to my passion, uh, this is where we need to understand that it's not only our personal ambitions and passions that uh, uh, will make an impact over time. Our role as business leaders is to impact our more than 100,000 or approximately 100,000 people in our network, which then again go out to their clients and impact uh, how they think about us. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it's, you know, it's, it's time for bold ambitions and it's time for uh, tangible actions out there. And that's kind of what we are encouraging uh, our people to do. Having said that, if you're not acting on this agenda, I can hardly see us be competitive uh, in the war for talent going forward. So we're a business with, uh, with attrition uh, and um, yeah, we're recruiting thousands of people uh, every year. Uh, and increasingly we are seeing uh, you know, students, uh, graduates asking us questions around not only what I think from a personal point of view in terms of, of the environment and sustainability going forward, but also what is our actions? What we, did we do so far? What's our targets going forward? And how can they uh, be empowered in order to act uh, you know, within our firm as well? So in order to stay competitive going forward, you simply need to act. And that goes not only for us, it pretty much goes for every business out there. All right. And Mr. Lindbergh, of course, this is not a one-time activity. It's something that uh, has mutated into a movement. From where you sit, what is the vision and what is the nexus between what you're doing and corporates and, of course, the Kenyan uh, entrepreneurs watching the program, they're asking how can they team up? Yeah, no, I, I think, well, when, when we started kind of our program 
uh, more than a year back, uh, we said, well, our vision and dream would be to educate, to inspire, and lead that journey on behalf of, uh, of our firm, our people, and our clients going forward. And I think similar to us, um, you know, Kenyan businesses as well, need to kind of take a couple of steps back, uh, then educate themselves, allow themselves to be inspired, uh, and take a leadership position going forward. Mm -hmm. All this uh, agenda is premised on resources. Perhaps, what is your view around this, especially in a time and space where countries are struggling in regards to having uh, uh, very fluid uh, resources, especially when it comes to funding and training and teaming up with uh, like-minded uh, organizations like PDO? Yeah, and I think this is where uh, we need to understand that it's a complex matter and uh, we cannot necessarily solve it with the old-fashioned way of thinking or old-fashioned way of solving problems, right? So uh, partnering up with, uh, with firms around you, mm -hmm. um, widening your ecosystems around you to work on this agenda would certainly be, uh, be important. Uh, the topic, the challenge, which is out there uh, and um, which we all are aware but not necessarily able to act on, needs kind of collaborative uh, actions and not necessarily, uh, you know, for each and every one to act on their own behalf. Mm -hmm. So I'd strongly encourage, uh, you know, business leaders out there to, to partner with, uh, well, yeah, firms around you, competitors, mm -hmm. in order to uh, kind of take a collective responsibility uh, to make change happen. All right. And uh, speaking about making change happen, I'm keen to hear from you. The whole aspect would crumble if we don't have a long-term strategy, especially when it comes to sustainability. And I know you're very big on this issue around sustainability. And just give us a sense of uh, understanding, especially on <clears throat> the sustainability conversation. How do we navigate around it? And also, we are in a place where a number of uh, companies are really keen to get a better understanding of this whole uh, juggernaut known as uh, carbon trading. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, let me start with, with carbon trading, right? So carbon trading and carbon markets would first and foremost be actions to mitigate the growth and concentration of, of greenhouse gases. And... Um, uh, carbon credits, which you then can buy in a in a market, yeah, um, is simply a certificate which allows you to emit one ton of carbon dioxide. Um, and I think what we are seeing is obviously quite a few firms um, buying carbon credits in order to offset uh, the uh, the emissions. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's a start, uh, but then again, uh, coming back to the, the growth in concentrations, uh, it will be tremendously interesting to see how that market develops uh, over the next few years as well. And yeah, it's early days, but it's, it's uh, most definitely developing uh, quite quickly right now. One of my points to your first uh, kind of questions is, well, even though environment and the environmental actions is an important part of the sustainability agenda, we need to make sure that, well, the social and the governance agenda is not being diluted. So, and I, I am seeing quite a few firms, well, they seem to, out in the market, seem to act quite quickly on, uh, on and around environmental uh, cases and issues. Uh, but not necessarily, you know, in the pace I'd like to see in terms of, uh, you know, all the social challenges out there, right? So um, I'd kind of use the opportunity once more to uh, emphasize the importance of not only working with the E in the ESG agenda, but also, uh, you know, strongly consider how we can make a difference, how we can impact, how we can influence the wider social uh, agenda going forward, especially which is kind of close to my heart, right? All right. I hope uh, we'll get to see more of 
like-minded individuals like you coming to set the agenda and drive change. I just want to get your closing thoughts, really. Um, it's a new year, uh, s companies are still settling in, uh, people are drawing up their strategies. Perhaps uh, what more would you like to see as companies uh, configure their strategies to meet the global dynamics that we operate in? Yeah, no, I, it, it's unpredictable times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, more unpredictable than, than ever. And I think, well, we discussed earlier on uh, this week that it's kind of more challenging right now than it was, well, during the spring of 2020 when the pandemic uh, just hit. Mm -hmm. Because, well, in a, with varied pace, uh, we are seeing countries opening up, locking down, opening up, locking down. We are seeing strong measures taken in quite a few countries, right? So, so, so to plan for, well, the next three to five years is tremendously challenging. Uh, so what I'm encouraging our leaders to do and, and what I would encourage others to do as well is, uh, well, to, with the respect, with kind of showing respect to the changing uh, business environment out there, make sure to not necessarily only make that three to five year plan of coming back to, to business. Uh, but also break that down into, well, the actionable roadmap for the next month, the next three months, the next six months, and so on and so forth. Because if there's one thing that is for sure, uh, it would be that in six months we would have different knowledge, different facts on the table than we have right now. So the ability to kind of combine slow thinking and agile acting and fast uh, actions going forward uh, is just tremendously important in order to be successful. All right. Very great insights there. Thank you for your time. Well, we've been speaking there to Mr. Tron Martin Lind Lindberg, who is the CEO of BDO, handling the EMA region, just giving us his perspectives around matters to do with the future of trading, especially when it comes to carbon trading, and of course the sustainability agenda, which he's quite passionate about and hoping to see more and more companies embrace this approach in order to stay afloat in these very murky waters. Well, on that note, we want to take a look at how the markets are performing on this day.